after a review of the film, first of all, our guys played hard. Uh, I thought they prepared very well. After looking at the tape, uh, number one, we, as coaches, we need to put them in a better position to have success. And number two is when they're in the position to have success, they have to execute. Uh, overall, though, I thought our, our players had a lot of want to. Uh, there was a lot of mistakes made, and uh, most of the mistakes uh, can be fixed by coaching, uh, getting them better. I take the responsibility of myself. Uh, we've moved on. We watched the tape yesterday. Uh, we dealt with it, the 24-hour rule. Now on to McNeese. A little bit about McNeese. Obviously, they're coached by Frank Wilson, who I believe is one of the greatest assistant coaches ever came to LSU. He's a great recruiter. I work with Frank. He's a great coach. I'm glad he's coaching my son. Uh, I'm glad we play in McNeese. I love playing in-state schools. I think that uh, it's good for the state. And uh, we're glad that McNeese is coming to uh, LSU. A little bit about McNeese. Obviously, we're playing uh, spread offense. Uh, my son Cody's the quarterback. Uh, Josh Matthews, he and Josh have, uh, have had a, a good career so far together. Uh, they are good players. Now, defense, Isaiah Chambers, All-American, outstanding rusher. Uh, I think he's a transfer from Houston. They play a 4-2-5 and a spread on offense. Out for this game. Out for this game is Sony, John Trey, Austin Declas, Ali Gay, and Cam Ware. All right. Any questions? Oh, yeah. Well, last thing, I'd like to thank all, all of our fans that showed up in Los Angeles. It was a great venue. I want to thank all those guys that came there, came to Los Angeles. Uh, our team, myself, we are really appreciated. I want to, uh, we look forward to playing in Tiger Stadium. Look forward to Tiger Walk being full. We look forward to Tiger Stadium being full and get back on the winning track. Any questions? Hey, Ed, uh, I have two. The, the, I'll start with the second one that just uh, popped because of the offensive line. How do you manage that position um, with those two guys being out? Yeah, you know, guys are going to have to step up. You know, uh, Charles is going to have to step up. Anthony Bradford will step up. Chase on Hines a little bit beat up. He's going to have to step up. We're going to have to play some young guys. Uh, we're going to mix, mix and match and see, see what's the best thing for, for our team. In pregame, I saw you were pretty animated with DJ and uh, Jay. Did, did you, as a defensive coach, did you sense maybe some of those issues before the game? Oh, as far as what, Mike? Tell me. <laughs> Being easily defendable, um, you know, like just the stuff that you guys are going to be running. Did you, did you feel like we need to be more diverse? Oh no, there's no question. They, 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 they did a good job. They, they knew what we we're doing. Uh, they. Uh, they out-schemed us in a lot of situations on offense and defense. Uh, we spent a lot of time on Sunday uh, going through those things, and we got to eliminate those things. There's a lot of things we could have eliminated as coaches, and we didn't do it. Hey, Coach, uh, a lot of the offensive linemen, obviously you recruited other big schools, one of them too. Um, is it been frustrating that you haven't been able to build your two deep and some of those younger guys just haven't been able to get on the field? Yeah, you? yeah, yes, it has. And, you know, Look, man, we won a lot of games with Austin Declas and uh, Ed Ingram. You know, those guys, we, we won a championship with those guys. Those guys started as freshmen in the swamp. So, you know, th those guys are good football players, and I believe in them. You know, it's a shame that we lost we lost our left tackle right before the season. I think that hurt us a little bit, you know. And, uh, you know, Liam's back, but we got to have more continuity. You know, they just got a new offensive line coach. I'm not making an excuse for them, but it's different for the guys. It's going to take time for them to gel. I believe in Brad. I believe in this offensive line. Some of these young guys are going to have to step up. Hey, you did find a few runs on that opening drive to start the second half before the turnover, right? Did you yeah. Find you were about yeah. Some? Yeah. We felt like we felt like we had to come out and run the football. Uh, we felt a couple of cracks in their defense. I thought our guys made a couple of adjustments at halftime that worked, but still, it was nowhere the variety of runs. It was nowhere the style of runs in which we need to run at LSU. And uh, we had a meeting on that, and that's going to get fixed. Hey, Coach, given the circumstances of how the last weekend went, the immediate move, and then going all the way to Cali for the game, how much do you think the impact of the past week affected the game players? Yeah. Now? yeah, you know, I would like to think zero. Now, I don't know if it did or not. And uh, because we were lucky, like I said, administration let us go to, to Houston. Uh, we were kind of in a little cocoon there. But I do believe, you know, maybe the guys were a little bit affected about their families, and that, that's a natural thing. But I felt like we had good practices. I felt like we traveled well. I felt like we were ready to play the game. I didn't, I didn't see many distractions during the week besides us having to move and their families being in harm's way. Coach, 
Coach, switching gears a little bit to, uh, to McNeese, we got to talk to uh, Cody yesterday, and uh, he said that uh, you were watching the West Florida film and kind of were able to talk to him a little bit about that. What was that conversation like? Well, you know, it's kind of like it was the first time I got to watch it, and uh, I want to evaluate our opponent, but I also want to cheer for my son. So it was, it was a little bit different. But, you know, I, I thought he made some good throws. They moved them out. They spread them out. I thought Josh made some good catches. I thought that they had a good game plan. It looked like they played well. Uh, a little bit uh, more in sync is the second year under the same offense. So I thought the timing was okay. It was pretty good. I thought he scrambled pretty good. I thought the offensive line blocked better. Hey, Ed, uh, Wilson, the advocate. You mentioned that when they got the Hurricanes, I mean, these two teams, Nice and LSU, probably understand what it's like to go through a hurricane yeah. as well as anyone. And you know it being from La Rose. Yeah. How do you deal with with that, just have, seeing your hometown be affected yeah. by that and seeing so many people in a state that yeah. you know so well be affected yeah. by these things. Yeah, I wanted to use an internal motivation. I wanted to win for them as, as bad as anybody. And I'm more disappointed in the loss than, 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 than a lot. And, uh, you know, uh, but you know what you got? When you start playing for that and stuff like that, it kind of gets out of why you're playing the game. You know, you got to play the game to win and focus on the fundamentals. And I wanted to win just as bad as anybody else for the people in the Rose and the people in Louisiana. It just didn't happen. But, hey, it's the beginning of the year. I do believe we have a great team. I do believe we have a great season. And it starts this week with Magnese. Hey, Coach. This is uh, Glenn West, Belichick Country. You know, I think this morning in your interview, you are saying one of the things that was, I guess, disappointing with the defense was kind of the, the crossing routes. The yeah. You guys had with the crossing yeah. routes. And just curious as to how you can – you know, improve on that in, in a week's time. And just yeah. Kind of who are some of the players you're hoping will step Well, up we, we, we went back and we looked at why uh, we're, we're not covering them. Uh, we had an extensive meeting on that. Uh, we came up with some drills uh, to help our guys uh, cover the certain crossing routes that we've seen. We had seen some different stuff that they hadn't seen. We saw some different stuff that uh, we hadn't showed them in practice. So that's, you know, that's coaching. And uh, so we fix, I think we fixed that. Uh, we made a couple of adjustments, a couple of calls that when they get in a couple of formations that we can take the heat off of the crossing routes. Uh, so I think, I know we made some adjustments uh, this week. Uh, you know, I saw live action the first time with our defensive coordinator. So he's got to learn our players. Our players got to learn our defensive coordinator. And we got to make a big jump this week. Coach Mike Scarborough with TigerBait.com. How lengthy is the list of uh, things that you uh, have to get fixed in a hurry? And, and what are going to be the few easiest things yeah. that you're going to be able to fix the quickest? Yeah. You know, I, I think that uh, when you look at the film, the thing I was most pleased with was the effort and the want to the players. There was no question about that. It has been like that. And it has been like that every, every day of practice. So the leadership, the continuity of the team, I can hey, – Everything else can be fixed, but that right there to me is the most important, and they've got it. Great leadership, a great team unity. Now, it's, it's fundamentals. It comes down to stance alignment, assignment, simplifying stuff, make sure, you know, or, let's see an example for offense. We have to protect the quarterback better. Whatever that takes to protect the quarterback, we cannot let our quarterback get hit. And we got to have short, easy throws to put the ball in our playmaker's hands in space and let them make plays. So that – and have a, a more – more variety in our run game. So we got to get that going. On defense, we got to be able to stop the run. Whatever that takes. Whatever we got, a gap football, whatever it takes to stop the run, we got to do that and eliminate the explosive plays. We had 11 explosive plays, and uh, that's way too many. Yeah, hey, just to kind of follow up on the offensive line, I mean, is there like cl a clear thing that's pinpointable that needs to be fixed, or is it is it more just about continuity and guys needing time together? You know what? I, I think there's some uh, – we need to help them out in the variety of runs that we run. I think if you only run one or two runs, people are going to key in. Or they, they know what you're running. They're going to overload the box. And uh, they practice those runs, and here they are. And, you know, they, they get coached too. I think that the more we can get the ball outside with our players, the more we can have gap schemes, the more we can help our offensive linemen out, the better we're going to be. I think it starts with us as coaches. We've got to help them out. Coach, two, two questions. Did, did you mention John Mann memory earlier? What's his status? Yeah, it's unknown right now. Uh, I will not know until the end of the week. Uh, right now, right now he's unavailable. Uh, that could change. I will not know that until Friday.
And uh, it looked like you were kind of kidding when you were talking to the guy before the game yeah. as you walked in. Were, were you just kind of kidding around, or did yeah. he make you at with what he said about the previous you should play game you had? No, that was that was all in fun. That, all that was in fun. Gotcha. Hey, Ed, uh, Sheldon Nichols at The Advocate. Um, I know it'd be more fun if you had won this past week, but uh, how special and unique is it to go against your son? And yeah. also, second, second, uh, you have the book. He, he was joking yesterday. It's going to be a three-on-one Ogeron advantage for <laughs> you guys. Uh, you got the book on him, but does he have the book on you? And oh, what, is he, what, is, yeah. what does he bring? Yeah, first of all, you know, the game's about LSU winning. We ought to win the game. About LSU McNeese, and uh, but personally, I'm proud of Cody. You think about Cody; he walked on at McNeese. He was the six-string quarterback and standing in line, and now he's one of the few players left in that class. And uh, he earned a scholarship. He's graduated. He's going to get his graduate degree. So we're proud of him, you know. And uh, Cody was always been a late bloomer. He was a tennis player. Uh, his brother was a star football player, but he cut, caught up his senior year. He brought his team to the semis. But, but you know what? Playing against Cody is going to be pretty cool. I know he, he's going to be talking some smack. I know he'll come to the sideline and talk a little smack. He knows all our players. He's excited to play in Dead Valley. You know, for a guy, from, uh, uh, a quarterback for Mac needs to come to LSU and play in Dead Valley, he's really excited about that. But, you know, once the game starts, it's going to be competition. I'm the head coach at LSU, and he's the quarterback at Mac needs. We both got to do what we can to win the game. Thank you. Thanks for asking that. Yeah, Ron Higgins, Tiger Wright. You talked about having more diversity in the run game and different formations and different plays. Did you not know that was not in the game plan for this opener? And secondly, couldn't that be adjusted during the game? Yeah, you know, around we we uh, last spring we went through our core runs, and uh, we put up five basic core runs that we want to run. Now, obviously, there was going to be some other runs that you sprinkle in the game plan and stuff. Now. Those five core runs are going to be uh, run through different formations, motions, and shifts. I think the game plan got uh, dwindled down a little bit because of the blitzes, because of the stunts that they were doing, and we felt sometimes that we may be running into them. I have to check out of them. Uh, so I think it's a combination of what they were doing and a combination of us just doing a little bit better. Coach, this is uh, Josh Sibley with uh, Louisiana Gridiron Football. Um, you had spoken previously about uh, limiting the RPO with uh, with Max, um, and I know you wanted to uh, limit the possibility of injury, but uh, do you plan on allowing Max to use his legs and run the ball a little bit more? Yeah. And also to follow up, do uh, you think it limited Max last week too much to not have that ability? You know, first of all, we never told him not to run. <laughs> okay, and he he could have run anytime he wanted to if he needed to scramble. Uh, we need to run a couple of more zone read options with him. We ran some, and there were some situations that I think he could have pulled it, and he could have outran the guy. So I think it's a combination of both, but no way did we mean to limit Max's mobility and him extend plays with his feet. Anytime he felt the need to scramble or run, he has the freedom to do that. Nobody told him not to run. But we're not going to run quarterback powers with him, quarterback leads, and just have a quarterback run offense. Uh, we, we're not going to do that. Hey, Coach. It's uh, Brent Martell here with AP. How are you? You good. Um, so I, I'm just curious about just the psychology of a dad when you think about all the ways and the language you've used to implore defensive linemen. I know that's your speciality to, yeah. to get after the quarterback. Yeah. You're probably pretty passionate in the way you've tried to convey that at yeah. times. You know, when when the guy you're telling them to base yeah. the file on top of this, yeah. I mean, how do how do you deal with that? I mean, is yeah, it challenging. Yeah, it, it is challenging. Uh, but I'm a coach the way I know how to coach, and uh, I, I may I may uh, tone down a couple of words I use because it is my son. But besides that, uh, Cody knows we're coming, man. Hey, wait, we, we we're hungry. We have, we have this stage in our belly, and we're coming. And Mike is on our way. He understands that. Yeah, yeah, Ron Higgins again. Uh, can you say I mean, not not naming names, but how many players were suspended for this game? Uh, you know, I just saw you the guys that are unavailable, and uh, that's unavailable. I mean, and, and when you look at suspensions, 
I mean, do you kind of space them out for non-conference games most of the time? That's what you try to do? No, we can't do that. Yep. We can't do that. Yep. Okay. Good question. Uh, hey, Coach. This is Shay Dixon with 24-7. Is um, coming off a game like that and, and going into a game like Nice, is this a time where – as a coach, you kind of want to get some other guys out there in spots and, and see what they look like, or is it more about let's keep moving forward with the guys we had and yeah. try to clean things yeah. up from there? Yeah, just moving forward with the guys we have. Let's play. We got to play. We got to play better. And uh, obviously, you know, you, you never can tell. You know, Mike Neeson's going to come in here and give us a game. Look, hey, the 2019 team, I think we'll – Northwestern had us at halftime or something like that. You know, these guys are going to come play their best game. There is no planning on pulling back or nothing like that. we got to get better with our football team. So, however the game goes, now if we can put guys in at the end or, or whatever, we can put them in. But we got to, we got to play our best to beat back Nice. we got to play our best to get this taste out of them out and start feeling good. Did, 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 oh, sorry. Oh, I was going to say with one more. Just what did you think of Bash and Brian Thomas? I know they didn't get a ton of looks, but – did you see enough to think those are guys that are going to help you out this year? Excellent. Uh, excellent. They've been excellent in camp. All our young receivers. And Bash made some good plays, made some good catches. Brian Thomas looked like he, he belonged out there. We need to play him more. And just two in injury things. Uh, Jay Ward, Jared Small, what's their status? I think Fox reported that Jared is out for the year. The yeah, yeah, Jer yeah, Jared will be out for the year. Uh, no question about that. Uh, I'm not sure about uh, Jay Ward yet. Uh, we, we're going to see it then. He's questionable. I would list him doubtful for this week. We'll see. But I'll know more about Friday. Coach, uh, how wild is it that Bobby Abair, the quarterback, had the lineman's son and you, the lineman, had the quarterback? <laughs> That's a good question, Glenn. I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't figure that out. But, uh, you know, yeah, uh, the, I never thought of it that way. That's, that's funny. Coach, to your knowledge, in not even just in college football and pro as well, have, have, has there ever been a coach coaching against his son and not just like, oh, an offensive-minded coach, but you're a yeah. defensive-minded coach and you're yeah. going against yeah. your game plan for your son? Yeah, yeah I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not a history buff. I haven't checked it, but I think that uh, John Elway went against his daddy one time. And uh, obviously that was on a big stage. And uh, But uh, – no, I don't. I don't know of any instance that that ha that has happened. I'm looking forward to it. You know, uh, Bobby April was a mentor of mine. He said, "Man, enjoy this. This is a special moment, and it is." And for me to be the head coach at LSU, and for Cody to be the quarterback at Mike Neese and us to play together, uh, that just he called me today. He said, "Hey, Dad, I, I, I want to get four more tickets. Can you help me with tickets?" <laughs> hey, Coach. Um, watching the tape when Max got the ball out on time. Y'all had some success. Yeah. Uh, did you see yeah. some positive things oh, yeah. that you can build on? Oh, yeah. You look at the, Hey, we came out there smoking, man. It looked like offense. We were going, we are going, we are going. And all of a sudden, you know, we started getting pressure on the quarterback. Uh, he missed several balls. As you know, you all saw number 33 was wide open. We missed that ball. Some balls were low. Uh, he made, he was he was um, really good at times. At times he's got to get better. But, again, uh, it's his first – not first start, but his first time. He's the man. He's the quarterback. And uh, we're gonna give him time to get better, but he needs to improve. Did you did you see some jitters that maybe we didn't see last year? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit of hesitation. But uh, look, those guys were in the face; they were loading it up. There was zero blitz, and he was getting hit, and he was tough. He hung in there. I said, "Get, get Garrett ready," and he didn't come out. And uh, you know, he got hit way too much. Coach, did anything shock or surprise you about the game? Something in camp that you thought was was strong here, and then it didn't play out that way. You know, I I felt that we were going to play really well. I felt that uh, I felt that we could we could match them up. Obviously, I thought that uh, the game was going to be tight. I knew that because when I watched them play against Hawaii, I knew that was a lot better football team. You could tell. Uh, I do believe that uh, the will to fight and everything was there. I just wish we'd have coached them better. I, I, I got I got to put that on me. I think offensively and defensively, we could have did some things better in camp, prepare our guys to play a better better uh, football game. That's the thing I'm most disappointed in the preparation that we had as coaches going into the game. And you mentioned Max real quick. Is there something to be said? He didn't play against crowds last year. Some of these guys were yeah. getting. 
crowds for the first yeah. time opposing crowds. Yeah, you know, that's true. That's true, but knowing him, man, that crowd probably fired him up. But, hey, you know what? We'll see. We, he's got to get better this week. He knows some things to improve. And uh, hopefully I can get Garrett in this week. I plan on playing Garrett. Uh, let him play and get some snaps, and let's see what he can do. Hey, uh, just uh, one more on Cody. Uh, I know in the NFL, sometimes when brothers play against each other, they have to cut it off during the week. When when are you cutting it off with uh, Cody with the phone calls? Never. That's my son. Never. All week long? That ain't. Okay, all week? That's my son. We, hey, we, I text him three or four times a day. I, we call three or five. Me and Cody are best friends, so that, that ain't never going to stop. Thanks. Thank you. Anybody else? Hey, Coach. Uh, yep. This is William with uh, Tiger Rag. Two parts. I want to ask you in relation to solving some of the uh, crossing route issues. Is yeah. it more of a uh, playing more zone? Is it, is it personnel you've got to get better? Uh, yeah. Get different personnel on the field? Well, the uh, as far as the crossing routes, I, I do believe is zone. You know, sometimes we have some match zone principles uh, that we have to look at, see if they're see if our guys can trust their keys and get it. Uh, they, they were showing some different keys uh, that were putting them in a confusing situation uh, that was allowing those crossing routes. And uh, we looked at it and we looked at the terminology and what we're doing. So we fixed a couple of things this week. We made some adjustments. Uh, if they get that look again, and hopefully that they, they, we can cover them. And second of all, just any consideration that you might want to get uh, Nussmeyer a series or so and maybe Corey Kiner uh, a series, that kind of thing? Yeah, no question. I want those guys to play. Uh, Kevin wanted to put in uh, Corey last last week. It just wasn't an opportune time. The, the kid deserved a chance, but we just couldn't afford him going in there with the game like it was. Uh, those guys I plan on playing this week for sure. Yeah, Brett wanted me to ask you if you'd ever had a opposing quarterback ask for extra tickets. <laughs> no, <laughs> I never had a no, no way. <laughs> that is fun. Um, I had a question, and it goes back to the coaching. And, and I just wonder how much of this can you really only fix in hindsight? And you know, at the beginning of the year, you said you wanted to be more involved, and you're going to fix the things that yeah. saw go wrong. Yeah. Obviously, you have your opportunity now. Yeah. Is it one of the things where, man? I'm, Obviously, if you'd known, you'd done it sooner, but you really couldn't know until you saw what your team was. Exactly right. You're exactly right. And look, look, they they gave us some uh, they gave us some challenging stuff, uh, tackle over stuff, end over stuff. Every every almost every down was a slide the front, adjust the back end, and they were going fast. So it it, it was a challenging offense. We knew that going into it. I wish I'd have prepared the team better. Not that I knew what he was what he was doing. I think I could have showed the team more of that, so that falls on me. But all the things that we saw on tape, we, we spent eight hours on the tape on Sunday, are all fixable. Everyone can be fixed. Oh, Scooter Hobbs and Lake Charles, you were at every McNeese game last spring. What difference is, did you notice from watching the tape of their opener and also yeah. – how much time has, has Cody spent around LSU's practices yeah. and stuff? Yeah. Well, um, first of all, I do believe that they were more in sync. I thought they, on offense, you know, uh, I studied offense more, obviously, because I'm, I'm, I'm a defensive coach. And uh, I thought they, they got rid of the ball quick. Uh, they moved Cody around. They sprinted him out. They had some boots, that which is, which is his strength. I thought they caught the ball well. I thought they had a good plan. Uh, Cody comes around here all the time. Our players love him. Uh, he's at our practices. He comes to our practice. Frank Wilson, their staff came to our practices. Cody comes through the football on the field here. So he's a member of my family, just like anybody else. He's he's around. Hey, Coach, this is uh, Josh Sibley again. Uh, what is the status of uh, Coy Moore? Uh, he seemed to have uh, success in, on, on big yeah. players down yeah. in the first half. Yeah. And, Kind of seemed to disappear in the second. Right? Yeah, <laughs> well, he doesn't need to disappear. We need to find him, and he's good. He's okay. Yeah, he had a nagging injury throughout the summer, uh, but it, it, it's it's fully healthy now. He's in good shape, and uh, there's nothing wrong with him. So yes, we do need to get the ball to him. We need to get the ball to Keshawn Booth there earlier. I thought he had a fantastic night with nine catches, whatever it is. The guy's a dynamite player, but we need to find him early. 
Thank you guys. Go Tigers.